Welcome everybody and thanks for joining on the channel. Um, I've just done a quick video on uh, the injector harness plug and the oil ingress issue with that uh, and that's put me in mind of um, catch cans. So I thought I'd go through what I did on my car to install a catch can. Now I'm not sure if all of you are aware but there is an issue with engines these days because of the EGR system and EGR is exhaust gas recirculation so what happens is when an engine is working you get exhaust not exhaust combustion gases leaking past the pistons and compressing the sump not to huge levels just slight, ever so slight amounts but this is enough to force um, oily misty residue uh, out through the engine uh, through the breather and now what we used to do in the past was we just dump it on the ground and of course we can't do that today because we know that oil is not good so what happens now is manufacturers recycle that uh, and it's called an EGR they recycle it back into the combustion chamber and it burns away and then we think nothing more of it so that works well except if you have um, a direct injection engine now without getting too long-winded about this basically what happens is uh, a direct injected engine as opposed to an indirect injected engine uh, the difference between the two is the direct engine sprays fuel directly into the cylinder indirect sprays it into the air inlet uh, mixes it with air and fuel in the inlet and then that gets dragged into the cylinder now my Commodore V8 with the LS3 has an indirect injection engine and the Jackaroo is a direct injection engine now the problem is lies solely with the direct injection engines and uh, some engines are worse than others and this is not just diesels it's petrol uh, as well so you get carbon deposits on the inside of the uh, valves and on the air intake and on the fuel intake side of things so much so that they can get really blocked and clogged up now the EGR sends around oily vapor so that makes it sort of oily wet which the carbon sticks to and builds up more and more and more and more now there are processes that you can ha you can um, get done on your engine where they fire um, hazelnut shells and things like that into the injectors into the uh, intake cylinder part of the cylinder and it cleans it all off and the, the, the nut kernels don't do any damage they just burn up and, and eject out the exhaust that's one way of doing it um, another way of doing it is to take the thing apart clean it up by hand you know these injector intake cleaners that you can buy on the market and put into your fuel don't, don't work so don't waste your money on those and of course the alternative to all of this is prevention is better than cure so those suggestions are cures what is a preventative is a catch can and the idea of a catch can is that it catches the oil and the vapor before it gets back to your engine so um, I fitted a catch can which I bought at a well known um, car parts store uh, I'm not going to tell you who they are but they begin with auto and um, I got this catch can and I put it in and it wasn't catching any oil vapor at all I thought I was doing really really well until I looked at the intake on the turbo and I thought oh, I'm not doing that well as it turned out I had a leak on the turbo anyway but um, that was irrelevant I've sorted that out now but the problem with the original catch can I purchased was the fact there was no filter in it it was just a can which the oily vapor went into circled around came out of another hose and then went back into the engine there was nothing to stop the oil so I did a bit of research and I looked into it and I purchased a cheapo um, catch can system and the reason I did that as opposed to a Ryko was not only 
What did the Ryko cost a lot more money, but the Ryko didn't come with any hoses. So it would have been a case of I would have to go out and buy hose and clamps and things like that. Whereas the cheapo one came with all of that equipment and it seemed to be reasonably good value for money, uh, 80 or 90 dollars. So I went with one of those. Now I'm going to take you down and show you in, in, in situ in a moment. But before I do that, uh, I just want to discuss a couple of problems um, I've had with it. And one was the drain. Now, you could, in theory, drain the oil back into the engine, but it's not really geared up for that. Um, it's more of a case of it goes down a pipe into a tap and then you drain it into it. When you do your oil change, you just drain it out. And I'll get 100 mils, something like that, of uh, oil out of it. Uh, it depends on how much driving you've done. Obviously, you've done your 5,000 kilometers before your oil, for your next oil change. So I get about 100 mils. So um, so when I fitted it, um, it's fairly straightforward to fit. And uh, I mounted it to the bulkhead at the back on the passenger side. Uh, I'll take you down and show you it in a moment. But uh, before I do that, um, I'd just like to say, please, 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 I'm trying to get the uh, subscriber base up to 200. Please like and subscribe. I, I don't make any money from the channel, but I'd like to buy a new camera uh, with an external microphone because people are having trouble hearing me speak. So if you feel that you can contribute, please look at joining Patreon. Uh, I do have a Patreon uh, and I do post things on there. Um, but currently I don't have any Patreons and um, the only way I can see me getting a new camera with an external microphone is with your help so if you can please if you can't that's fine I'm not here to make money really I'm here to make content for people who struggle and uh, I try and help people out that's all I'm, my goal is I don't want to make money but uh, I'd like to buy a new action camera if possible Thank you very much and uh, well let's go down and have a look at the car. Okay here we are down at the car. Um, I'm just going to open up the bonnet here now ready for you to uh, see what we're doing. But I just want to do, show you that these struts, if you struggle to open the bonnet and hold the bonnet up get yourself a couple of them struts for about $90 on eBay. So here's my catch can, here's a pipe and here's a pipe that they go to and then the drain pipe goes underneath. So let's take the top off this and have a look in here. Diesel engine oil is pretty dirty so I would suggest you uh, put a pair of gloves on like I'm about to do. These are the gloves I used in the uh, previous video so I'm pleased to put the gloves on so what's in here is the filter and there's the filter right there now I opted for the metal, there's two choices you can opt for the metal filter or you can opt for the, uh, the nylon filter. All in all, it's not in bad nick. It's uh, pretty clean. And uh, so is this. It has a relief valve on the top too, just, for, uh, just to be safe. What happens? So exhaust gases escape out of the engine along this pipe here. They go into the top of there where this sits so they're in that top area here they go down into the filter out through the filter body and then they come out of the pipe below it which you can just see down there that pipe then goes around here 
and returns back to the air intake over there. I don't know if you can see that. And goes down into the turbine. Somewhere under here. There it is. The drain. And as you can see, it's pretty messy. It gets a bit gummed up under there. Give it a quick blast with brake cleaner so you can actually see that it's actually what it is and then we'll turn it on and see what comes out and there you go that's about all of the the oil that I get out of there between services that was about 50 mil I do get around about 100 mil and then I just pop that back up into that hole and that's it done for a bit longer now that concludes the catch can video any questions please put them in the comments um, I'll link to the components I purchased uh, I'll also put some information in there about the Ryko uh, catch can and um, hopefully uh, that helps you out a little bit um, I'm getting a phone call so I'll see you